All right, so today I'm going to be installing the what is it, Flying Miata cabin air filter setup. It's really cool. The directions come in Japanese. So I'm just going to set these down right here so I have them to look at. But you start off, you just got to pry this little kind of plastic cover off. Well, mine has disappeared forever. And that was supposed to be a 10 mil. But, but there's a whole lot of gunk up in here. Definitely something made a nest there at one point. So I gotta clean all that shit out. That is fucking nasty. Holy shit. All right, so I forgot I turned it off, but this, you literally just shove a pick or a screwdriver flathead in and just pop these little tabs up. Easy peasy, and then put off to the side for a second. And then your instructions will show you that yeah, you quite literally just put the mesh underneath it. So it doesn't really look like it has a direction and you just put the mesh underneath it and then you reinstall it. So I have the mesh. In so now you have a pre-mesh filter on the exterior that will prevent all of that shit from ever getting in. All right, now for this next part, you're going to go ahead and pry up your little door panel guy. You don't really need to take it all the way off, just enough that you can pry plastic out of the way. Go ahead and pry this guy down. And then I'm just kind of going to put that back a little. Go ahead, grab you a 10 mil. bolt out and you're gonna go ahead and start to give it a yank around the usual you're actually gonna need to take your a pillar down I always just pop it and put it to the side I can get the front out now that I got that out of the way throw it to the side and then as you can see, you got quite a few clips in the way. They recommending unclipping all of these. Every single last one. Which, I'll be honest with you, it's a lot of clips. a lot of clips that one honestly I think will be fine and then get your handy dandy little pliers kind of reach up on in here grab that little plastic part now oh, there we go okay so there's little clips on each side that you gotta undo before you can actually pull it off. That makes sense. And then grab this little guy. Reach on up in there. Grab the little tab. Ugh. And as you can see, a lot of that gunk made it all the way down here. Look at all that shit. You can't, you can't really see. But there's gunk all up in there. So I'm gonna have to spend time cleaning that out now too. It's fucking disgusting. I have pulled out so much of this from on top of the blower motor that now my AC is so much stronger, I didn't even know how clogged my blower motor really was. That's so bad. That's so disgusting.
100% recommend this. All right, and then for reinstalling the filter, just make sure you have it the right direction, and then you slide her on up in there. You take the OEM clip thing, and get her clipped in. Give everything a plug back in. Just so I can It's crazy how much stronger that is now. It's roll bar day. Got the roll bar that fit in here just enough so that I could transport it to my mother-in-law's garage to put it in because for some reason it didn't fit in my other car. And then my other other car is not road legal right now. I gotta go get a new tag and shit for it. But yep, we're all set. All right, so I got it bolted up to the frame rails. Sandwich it with a little play. I'm gonna go ahead and go back in a torque, but look at this cool little, you can kind of use the bolts to hold your liner back up. Shout out to the old man for showing up to help. All right, so I know it's been a few days, but I got all the trim back in, made all the cuts. Where you're supposed to make all the cuts, as you can see, That's not anyway. And then I got the leather on it that makes the trim look a little bit more complete. And yeah. I personally may drill some holes and throw some zip ties to hold it in better, but it stays in there really well. So worth it. Alright, so I hit 20,000 miles today. A little bit past it, but that means I'm gonna do my spark plugs and my oil change. So cue the time lapse. All right, now while I let the oil change, I'm the type of person that likes to let it drip as long as possible. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the spark plugs. By the time I'm done with that, I'll throw everything back on and fill her up with some oil. All 
So, not the worst plugs I've ever seen, but also not the best. Definitely could use it. These plugs still say Mazda on them. So part of me's scared, because I've checked the Carfax and it just says maintenance. It doesn't say specifically. I wonder if these are the original plugs and they have 20,000 miles on them. I hope not. I feel like they would look a lot worse. But, I mean, this is a 2016 with only 20,000 miles, so whoever owned it before barely drove it. So it's iffy. It's definitely possible. But other than that, can't wait to put these new NGKs on. I'm about to check the gapping right now and get them in. All right. And it calls for 15 foot pounds and I'm a very much a two spec guy so and it says up to 17 I'm honestly going to go up to 17 just because feels like nothing you can definitely go tighter but the book says so I'm gonna go with what the book says and yeah spark plugs are officially done just gonna use some YouTube magic and all done time to put some oil in it and call it a day All right, and I'm using some full synthetic advanced 0W20 from Valvoline. Mm -hmm. I typically put it a little bit in, about half of what's supposed to, and then I look, you can see down there, there's the oil filter. Look for any drippage, and then I'm looking for any drippage from the bolt itself, and it appears we're good, so I'm going to top her up and start her up. Now that the car's running, check for leaks again. Looking bone dry, and just like that, you're done. All right, so I got just got done with the spark plugs and oil change on my car, and I'm driving home from my mother-in-law's house, and I haven't really gotten on it yet because I want to let everything get lubricated before I start to give it the beans, but other than that, the startup initially sounds crazy, like it was just dying for that little bit of extra spark on the startup, so... Can't wait to get on it a little bit. See what she does. I'm mainly, I'm glad I did this at an empty tank because now I'm gonna get a true comparison to see if I get better gas mileage with the new plugs. Because that's one thing that I was a little iffy about is my gas mileage. Cause I was like, hmm, I should be getting a little bit better. So now I have fresh oil and fresh plugs. I should be getting what I should have been getting. See, already with that baby pull, it definitely feels like a little bit smoother. I wasn't flooring it, so I didn't, I can't talk about the response time, but go from a dig right here. I chirped the tires. 
I've not been able to even break these things loose since I put the new tires on because they're so wide and grippy. I would definitely say that I picked up a little bit of extra horse puppies there if I was able to actually chirp my tires like that. Yeah, I definitely think that it was <laughs> those Mazda plugs may have been the stock ones and they were just never changed because the mileage was low even though in my opinion even if the mileage is low once the years get on you should change your plugs but either way car feels great i'm gonna get some gas and check for more leaks and other than that have a great night y'all